Well done on making it into the bat. Now you can start capturing targets and sharing your data with the rest of the group to hopefully help produce some fantastic images. Now that you're a BAT member, as well as seeing channel number one, the BAT welcome channel, and channel number two, the BAT exam, you should also be able to see all the other BAT channels. I'm just gonna run through each one of these just to explain what they're used for. Now, of course, this is the really important one, number three, which is the instructions, which of course we never read. But on here, you'll find all the information you really need to be a part of the BAT from shooting a BAT target to processing, choosing, etc, etc. I suggest you, you read that when, when you have a bit of time. Also, if you are interested in shooting the Hubble Variable Nebula, you can click the little image for the Hubble Variable Nebula. It looks like a, I don't know what it is, but it looks like a, a variable nebula. And the channel where you can talk directly to the other variable nebula images will open up to you. So what I'll do here is run through each of the processes contained in the instructions in a bit more detail. All right, so number one, register your scope. What we'd like you to do is click on this link here and fill out the form using your Discord name, not your real name. It's just a basic form. You can see here, put your Discord name in here, telescope manufacturer, model, optical design, just a few basic questions about your telescope that you're using and your camera. Number two is optional, which is basically tell us where you live. And this is just so we can figure out the best targets for members in different parts of the world. Number three, again an optional one, test your scope. This actually relates back to number one, register your rig, and is also optional. But it is very, very useful if you're having a problem with your scope or you're new to imaging and you'd like one of the experienced guys here on the server to check your scope to see how well it's doing. They will also recommend, if they can see a problem, what to do to fix that problem. And all you need to do to get your scope tested is drop an image, just one single sub, not a stacked image, one single sub into the Test My Scope channel, number four. And here you can see where some of the guys have been dropping their images in and the guys that check the images are also offering opinions and suggestions on, you know, improvements that can be made. One of the guys who's tested your scope for resolution will then enter your resolution number in the register your scope spreadsheet. This produces a very interesting table of what our telescopes are actually capable of. If you look on Rory's website, the astrobistic.com website, Click on Toolbox, scroll down to the bottom left here, look at Sharpest Scopes. There's a table here of, basically, this is a table from that Register Your Rig link. So really, looking at this table, there's no surprise, is there, that the 12.5-inch CDK from Plane Wave is producing the best resolution at 1.44 FWHM. But it also gives you a guide as to how your scope is doing in relation to the top scopes. And if you can get under three arc seconds resolution, then you'll be able to enter the high resolution images group. Also, if you at the moment are not achieving less than three arc seconds, but you'd like to get below three arc seconds, there's a link here to Rory's website, Best Gear for Lucky Imaging, which will make some suggestions to help you. Number four, choose a bat target. So we have three sizes of target, wide field, regular, and high resolution. The wide field will really suit people that are using a DSLR and a lens or a wide field setup. Regular will be your normal telescope, what I would call a normal telescope setup, which is perhaps an 18 inch Newtonian on an NEQ6. And high resolution, as we've mentioned before, is when you can get down below three arc seconds. So if you take a look here in Number five, back targets. You'll see these are our current back targets. So for example, target name Andromeda, target type wide field, great. Uh, gives the name of the target manager, where to upload your data and where to download the data if you want to have a go at processing it later on. And we have the cutoff date, end of the year in this particular case, and the status update. And this is your framing reference. Now this is quite important. And combined with the FOV of your telescope, we'll decide if you can shoot a particular target. So the first thing you need to do if you see a target that you fancy in the bat targets is to check out your field of view of your imaging setup. And there is a link here in choose a bat target, astrobiscuit.com slash FOV. 
So if we click on that link, we come to this rather daunting looking page with lots of boxes you can type stuff into. But the first thing you want to do is probably imaging mode. So if you click on imaging mode, then you can choose your object, telescope and camera. So for example, let's choose M31, Andromeda, scope. Let's see if we can find my scope in the list here. No, let's, oh, there we go. There's the 200 PDS. And the camera, my camera is a QHY168. There it is there. And you click add to view. If we scroll down, you'll see what sort of view my particular scope and my camera will get on the M31. And as you can see, it's um, not ideal for my telescope. So let's look at another bat target. Now I do know that another one of the bat targets at the moment is M33, which is the Triangulum Galaxy. So let's look at M33. Add to view and see how that one looks. And you can see here, I can get this one perfectly. So from the point of view of choosing my bat target, you can see that the M33 will suit me fine. Now, something that is quite important for this when you shoot your images is that you actually shoot your images with the camera rotated correctly. In the download folder, there will be a framing reference. Now, this file is so that you can check your framings correct on the target. And also, it's the image that you need to register your data against. Now, this is important, and it makes the people that are actually processing the data's life a lot easier, and I'll show you why. Now, this is an image of M33. This is about 16 hours of data. And this is star-aligned or registered against the framing reference that is in the bat download folder and as you can see it does give potential problems for anyone that's trying to process the data so if you can please take your images with the correct camera rotation or the correct framing carried out on the actual object that matches as close as you can the framing reference file that's provided. Now we're really going to get into the nitty gritty of uploading your data. So when you've taken all your subs for a particular target, then you've got to stack the subs together using your calibration frames and the framing reference. And now I'm going to show you three ways of doing this using PixInsight, Astro Pixel Processor and Deep Sky Stacker. So here we are in PixInsight. Now I've just loaded the reference file, which we showed you earlier from the downloads folder for M31 and just one of the stacks that's available in the download folder. So first job as usual, just put a quick stretch on this image. Now, of course, as you can see, this image that's been uploaded hasn't been registered with the reference image. And it also hasn't been cropped. It needs to be cropped slightly. If we look at the top of the image, you can see we've got a bit of blackness there. So first of all, we need to crop this. So we just go into dynamic crop. I'm just going to throw a very quick crop on that because we don't need that sort of stuff at the top. So guys, if you're watching this, please do this. Please register your images for us because it makes life a lot easier in the long run. That's how the dynamic crop. Now what I'll do is I'll register this image with our reference image that's been provided. So we go to processes, star alignment, just here. The reference image, I will add the view, which is reference M31. And as we've only got one file, I'm just going to add the one view, which is this file here. Click OK. Then hit the round circle here to do the star alignment. Shut down star alignment. Let's have a look at what we've got. So now you can see that this, what we're looking at here is this image, which was uploaded, registered with the reference image. Now this is what ideally we'd like to see uploaded not this kind of image but this kind of image where it's actually been registered so right so here's abp and this is going to highlight one of the problems that i thought might happen when i saw that reference image i've got the two images the same images before loaded the reference the m31 reference and the astro bluff fits file here they're loaded into abp and what you have to do with ABP first before you register is analyze your stars. So we click on analyze stars and you'll see what happens here. It 
gives a warning. Star analysis failed on some of the frames. Please check the problematic frames for any artifacts, blah, blah, blah. So click OK on that. And you'll see that down here it says star analysis failed. So if we go to register, what you would do, assuming that the star analysis hadn't failed, you go to register and you click set reference. And then just click yes on that click on that file there but I can't click on it because this frame can't be selected for the reference please start analyze this frame first well of course we did that and it's thrown up this error so this is a note to guys if you're making reference frames you should create the reference frame using an actual image that you've taken with your scope to create a proper reference frame you are having trouble aligning your image you can of course just post a message in the back cave channel and ask a fellow member to align it for you so let's have a look in deep sky stacker to see if it will deal with the with the stacking of those two images so we'll open the picture files we'll add those two files in so we have the reference file add that one and we'll add in astro bluffs image just there if you right click on the file you want to use as the reference file, it will say use as reference frame. So left click on that, then check the boxes of the images you want to align to the reference frame. So in this case, it's only the one. So tick that box and click register checked pictures. Click OK. We're ignoring all this for now because I'm just showing how to register your frames at the moment. Click OK on that and the Deep Sky Stacker will run. And it's done it. It's actually produced a stacked image. So that's good. So this actually worked in Deep Sky Stacker, Pix in Sight, but not in Astro Pixel Processor. Once you've created your registered stack, you then need to rename it before you upload it. In the upload folder, there is a file which you can view in your web browser, which gives instructions on how to rename your file. Please include the total integration time in your file name, and we would like you to rename your files like this. So we have the target name, what channel it is. So that could be uh, one of these, RGB, LRGB, HA03, S2 or IR. Your Discord name, the date it was done and your integration time. So once you've created your file and renamed it, all you need to do is drag and drop it into the bat upload folder. And from this point, what will happen is the person who owns this target, which will come to in the next section, will then move this into the download section after he or she has reviewed the images that have been uploaded, and then it will be available for other people to download. Just a note, if you're considering downloading the data to create a wonderful image from all the data that the BAT members have uploaded, it might be an idea to wait until after the cutoff date, because before that cutoff date, in theory, loads more data is coming in, so you may well be missing out. So my suggestion is to wait until after the cutoff date before downloading. So nearly at the end now, guys, the last but well, one section, because we're going to talk about downloading in a little while, is number six, suggest your own BAT target. If there's a target that you're really interested in getting some images of and uh, you think it would benefit, well, it would definitely benefit from having lots and lots of data on the, on the same target, as this is the whole point of the bat. Suggest it in Suggest Your Own Bat Target. Once you've suggested it, you then need to find four other people to shoot it with you. You will now own this target and you will need to decide your reference frame and also how you want the image framed and your name will now be linked to the target so people can ask you questions. Once you've got your four people to image the target with you, you also need to fill out this form here. So this information can then be put in our Bat Targets channel. So if we take a look in the Bat Targets channel, just here, you can see, for example, Skilled Spark here has put target name, etc 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 with the relevant locations if you get stuck with any of this then uh, just speak to a bat mod who will help you out what happens next is that people should in theory start uploading data of your target to your upload folder and you will need to monitor that upload folder 
you know, not every day, obviously, but every so often, just to see what's in the upload folder. Check the data that's in the upload folder to make sure it's good and it matches your, your reference images. And then drag it across and move it to the download folder for your target. As we said before, if you get stuck with this, just speak to a bat mod. I would also suggest you create your own thread for, for your target. If you go to bat targets, at the top there's threads. And in here you can see the threads where people are talking about particular bat targets. So this is the best way to keep all your chat and all your talk about your particular target in one place. The last section is number seven, download the bat data. If you'd like to download some of the data from the bat members to produce a really stunning image, you need to look in number five, bat targets if we look at this particular target here ngc7331 you can see listed here is the upload folder and the download folder and in the download folder you can see all the data that's been collected for this particular image so quite a lot of data for this one so go ahead download the data and get processing and hopefully make a really super image and for this particular target if you look in bat results and scroll up in the window here you will see what has previously been created from all that data on that particular target. Let's go up a little bit further. There's one here. This is a result from Jack Falai. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. And this is, he's done a stack of the LRGB, but no narrow band and a bit of lucky imaging for the core. So you can see here, beautiful image, absolutely fantastic. And here is the NGC 7331, slightly bigger in its full glory. Absolutely beautiful. So guys, congratulations on making it all the way through this video. But at least you know now how to upload, download, uh, suggest your targets and everything else to do with the bat. So thanks for watching and clear skies.